Debate over gain-of-function research, the type of research that is at the heart of the lab leak story, at least potentially, has reignited since the Department of Energy said that this is the likely origin of the COVID-19 pandemic, a escape from a lab. Now, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby had this to say about President Biden's continued support of funding for gain-of-function research. Does the president believe that this type of gain-of-function research is proven? He believes that um, it's important to help prevent future pandemics, which means he understands that there has to be legitimate scientific research into the sources or potential sources of pandemics so that we understand it so that we can prevent them and we can prevent them from happening, obviously. Um, but he also believes, and, and, and this is why he wants the, the whole of government effort here to understand it, um, that that research has to be done, must be done in a safe and secure manner as, and as transparent as possible to the rest of the world so that so people know what's going on. I think that's a fancy way of saying yes. Meanwhile, Senator Rand Paul told Real Clear Politics White House report Philip Wegman, quote, if we have learned anything from this pandemic, it's that risky virus enhancing research like the type conducted in Wuhan that was funded by the U.S. government needs more oversight and regulation. He joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Philip. Thanks for having me. So th this is an interesting uh, kind of uh, trade-off that's being raised here. It's being framed as, should we do gain-of-function research versus should we not do gain-of-function research? Is that the right question? Is it possible to do gain-of-function research safely at all? That's a question that the previous administrations took up uh, before a once-in-a-century pandemic and before there was a lot of debate, um, much of it very emotional, about whether or not there were some things that should be out of bounds. So if, if you ignore all of the context, something that normally you shouldn't do in news, uh, but if you ignore the last three years, including that pandemic that killed more than a million Americans, uh, this story is just one about how the Biden administration is considering whether or not there should be new regulations on a type of research that the Obama administration put a taxpayer-funded uh, moratorium on and that the uh, Trump administration then lifted three years later. Setting aside you know, all of the, the controversy that we've seen, this is still a fierce debate that is happening uh, among scientists currently. And then when you look at all of the context, of course, uh, it, it becomes that much more charged. I think that what the uh, administration is doing is they're trying to be forthright and say, you know, we think that there is some merit to this type of analysis, uh, but we want significant safeguards. So this is all happening, you know, with the, the context of the Department of Energy coming out uh, and saying that they're now it, it, in the direction of thinking it was a lab leak. They're expressing that with low confidence. Obviously, it's not the final word on the subject. No one should say it's, you know, conclusively been determined or something like that. But there was a lot of media reporting in the last uh, 48 hours on lab leak theory. This, is, this issue is getting more mainstream attention than it's ever gotten. And previously, when it was getting mainstream attention, it was being derided as something only like conspiracy theorists were buying into. So I, I think it's great to be putting these kinds of questions um, to actual, you know, government um, figures. Uh, you know, what did you make of Kirby's response uh, to you? And do you sense any shifting in the government's willingness to, to indulge in lab leak speculation, which was something they were willing to do to some degree before? It was really the media that was trying to clap down on it. But is it shifting at all? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the administration, this is not something that came out of the blue. Uh, the uh, NIH empowered a advisory board on biosecurity at the National Science Association to take a closer look at what type of new regulations should be put in place uh, for scientists here in the United States doing this type of research. And now, as the New York Times previously reported, uh, that decision rests with the White House. What we heard from Kirby on Tuesday was a pretty forthright explanation of where their head is. They think that there are some advantages to doing uh, research on, on pandemics, um, to making some of these pathogens more dangerous so that you can get ahead of a, um, you know, of a catastrophe and, and plan for it. Uh, but, you know, there has to be, um, you know, 
you know, safeguards put in place. I think his, his phrase was that it had to be safe, secure, and transparent. I'm not sure uh, that the public is going to have an appetite uh, for that type uh, of, um, you know, scientific inquiry. But what I do appreciate is that the administration that you know they gave a, a straight answer of where the president's thinking is on this question and rather than uh the media all just running to deride uh, anyone who who asks these sort of questions um there, there seems to be you know some reasoned uh reasoned analysis here um and i, I think that you know that is the the most significant change from what we saw over the last three years yeah the irony is that the kind of media shut down of any conversations about uh, lab leak theory it took the conversation from a place where it could have been about how do we address the fact that there were warning signs, there was this 2018 report um, that there were safety issues at the Wuhan lab, how can we, you know, instead of focusing the problem on all of the warning signs that could have been addressed and the problems that could have made the process safer so that potentially useful research could have persisted, it instead became a conversation about how to, 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 you know, it's all or nothing, I think. It's a much more black and white conversation than it would have been otherwise, which it's not clear to me, you know, if I'm not a scientist, I don't know if this kind of research is ultimately more beneficial than it is harmful. But given how many um, kind of uh, tension points there were or error points there were that could have been corrected, it seems a shame to be in a position where we could potentially be throwing out the, ba the baby with the bathwater prematurely without having a robust conversation if there are, in fact, safety protocols that could have been put in place. I remember there was reporting about how people who, who visited the labs observed that they're basically tiered hierarchies of um, protections or safety measures at different kinds of labs, depending on how dangerous the materials they're working with are. And it was there was a clear mismatch with the gain of function research and the quality and level of the labs. Um, you know, we all know that there's like the last uh, you know, black death, death virus or whatever, all of these extinct viruses, they keep up in Antarctica somewhere. You can imagine some really uber safety protocols that could go into place if it really was scientifically beneficial to do research on these things. Because again, you can imagine a world in which there's a, a pandemic that comes down the pike that we've done no research on and people are complaining that the scientists were wrong to not have tried to get ahead of that and to not have started to do the kind of research that could make a vaccine come more quickly. So, I, you know, I don't know what your impression is uh, speaking to some of these officials uh, firsthand, Philip, but do, do you get the impression that there is at all any appetite for fixing the problem as opposed to pivoting to a shutdown of this kind of research altogether? I think that what we're seeing is a pivot back to the Obama era uh, square one here, because the Obama administration looks at the risks, weighs them against potential rewards and says, wait a minute, we don't want taxpayer funding going to this type of risky uh, research. And that was uh, the moratorium that was put in place in 2014. Then in 2017 is the Trump administration that lifts that moratorium. And I think that what is beginning now and, and what hopefully we'll learn more about in the coming weeks and months ahead is whether or not uh, the scientific community as well as um, some of these government agencies are able to have a reasoned discussion and really um, focus on whether or not it is prudent to do this type of research uh, without a lot of the, the moral panic that we saw previously. Because uh, just as it is possible to say, hey, there are some benefits to this type of inquiry, it's also, you know, we have seen things that up until recently were more likely to be dismissed. For instance, uh, the Office of Inspector General's uh, letter from HHS saying that NIH overlooked some um, red flags with EcoHealth Alliance, that they didn't do due diligence there. So the hope, I think, ought to be uh, that you get all of these smart people in the room and you say, all right, is this something that we actually need? Or are you just, um, you know, a scientist who is excited to get your hands on, uh, you know, old bubonic blood samples because uh, of some strange, you know, academic fascination? Or, or is this something that we actually could use, uh, you know, uh, heaven helping uh, to prevent uh, another once in a Don't give him any ideas, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that scene from Jurassic Park, right? Yep. You know, <laughs> yes, it scientists is. scientists were too focused on whether or not they could to ask if they should. Dr. Frankenstein's all the way down. Thank you so much for joining us today. Philip Wegman, we appreciate it. And we'll have more rising right after this.